right now on Five on Your Side at 10. We're already looking ahead to Tuesday for our next severe weather risk. What threats we're expecting on Tuesday, the timing and ingredients that come together to start the week. Their place of worship became the scene of a crash. Tonight, how they're finding hope with faith and fellowship. Ending note. Shot by Gessel, rebound, scores! No playoff hockey again in St. Louis this year. Tonight, how fans and downtown businesses are not singing the blues. Between soccer and the Battle Hawks, uh, there's all kinds of sports in St. Louis. It's actually really exciting. First tonight, a live look downtown where we're rounding out a weekend of near record warmth. Now the weather first team is looking ahead to the threat of severe weather. Good evening, I'm Mike Bush. That threat will have us in a weather alert on Tuesday. Meteorologist Gary Frank is preparing us all in tonight's Weather First forecast. Yeah, good evening. You don't step outside at any point today, even right now, and think, oh yeah, it's mid-April, no problem. Uh, it doesn't feel like that at all. It's even a little bit muggy as we look at Chesterfield right now, as temperatures still at this hour in the low 70s, not only here, but throughout the entire region. It's very warm. It's a little muggy. Even as we zoom in locally, it's still 75 in Sullivan, so it's very mild. The storm system out to the west, that's the one that we'll continue to monitor and it's moving slowly, but as it works its way gradually across Utah and into Denver across the Rockies, it's going to create our next severe weather threat and that arrives for Tuesday. Right now as temperatures still hold on steady in the low 70s, it's a little bit muggy with a calm wind and overnight there is a frontal boundary that drapes across us but doesn't do much. Upper 50s to the north low 60s to the south. It's still warm, but for the week ahead, warmer conditions remain. We're going to see that severe weather potential specifically on Tuesday, but maybe even a minor one on Monday as well before another cool down is on the way. But we're monitoring those severe weather ingredients for Tuesday. The timing, specific location and types of severe weather all in jeopardy right now, but looks to be later on Tuesday. We'll time that out and talk about some of the scenarios that are in play over the next 36 hours. A man is dead after being hit by a car in Fairview Heights. The crash happened at around 1 this morning near the Metro train station off St. Clair Avenue. Jeremy Gunter of Belleville was taken to the hospital where he later died. According to witnesses, Gunter was trying to cross the street at the time of the crash. Police are still investigating. Tonight, police are investigating a serious crash on I-44 in downtown St. Louis. That crash shut down the eastbound lanes of the depressed section near the arch for a couple of hours. It involved a car and a motorcycle. At least two people were hurt and taken to the hospital. And right now, we don't know their conditions, but we will keep you up to date as soon as we learn more. We're learning new details tonight about the driver who crashed a pickup truck into a church in St. Charles. New tonight, our Annie Crawl has reaction from church members who still gathered today less than 24 hours after their place of worship was heavily damaged. Annie. Police say it was a 16-year-old boy driving the yellow pickup truck who crashed through a wall of the Emerson Unitarian Universalist Church yesterday afternoon. No one was inside, thankfully, at the time. Today's Sunday service looked very different than any other week. Rebuilding. The best word to describe where the Emerson Unitarian Universalist Chapel and community is at on a Sunday morning after having a bright yellow pickup truck drive through their sanctuary just one day before. We just want everybody to know that we're here and we're not going to be knocked down just because our buildings were knocked out. The church hosted a Sunday morning Zoom service with three other congregations. We sh reassure each other that we are together. Afterwards, members met up at the Painted Sky Coffee Shop in St. Charles for fellowship and to reflect after seeing the devastation for themselves. Some of them who were in the church the night before the crash feel very lucky. It was right in that spot the next day where that truck ended up landing, literally right where we were, which was shocking and weird. This is not the first time that we have shifted buildings. It is not the first time that we have lost a building. The only injury was the 16-year-old driver. He was taken to St. Louis Children's Hospital and has since been released. St. Charles City Police say the cause of the crash is still under investigation as church members once again ask. Sorry, how do we rebuild from this? We are a we are a scrappy congregation, so we do um, we we do know that we'll recover um, and we need to just figure out what the next steps are. 
The church is expected to continue cleanup and potentially move their gatherings to a different location as the weeks progress. If you're interested in supporting them as they continue to rebuild, you can find a link to their donation page in the As Seen on TV section at KSTK.com. Mike. Annie, thanks. Well, it was a big day for St. Louis sports with all four of our major teams in action. The Blues and City SC at home, Cardinals and Battlehawks, they were on the road. The blue season came to another disappointing end with the note missing out on the playoffs for the second straight year. That can't be good news for fans and businesses near Enterprise Center, but our Laura Barczewski talked with some of those folks today. Laura? Mike, Blues fans and businesses, we're absolutely bummed that we won't be going to the playoffs this year, but they say there's still so much more to be excited about in the St. Louis sports world that will fill the gap. St. Louis Blues fans filled Enterprise Center for the last home game of the season. They played pretty good, um, three good periods, so could have, could have saw some more goals, but we got an empty netter. We didn't make it to overtime. That's awesome. Even though they're heading home with a win, fans are bummed they won't be seeing summer playoff hockey. It's bittersweet. It's bittersweet. Uh, you know, I love coming out of a Blues game and enjoying the warmth, but Again, we'll just come back stronger next year. And while the businesses like Schlafly are bummed too, it's not something they have to rely on anymore as seasons ramp up for the other big players in town. Between soccer and the Battle Hawks, uh, there's all kinds of sports in St. Louis. It's actually really exciting. Schlafly events manager John Ellifrost says they get people into the tap room before and after games for all four major sports teams and are thriving, especially on City ST game days. It's a mutual relationship. It really is because the fans come to support the team. Uh, we support them as well. The fans come here and, and uh, hang out and, uh, and have a blast before the game and everybody has a good time and it's a win-win for everybody. Even fans can see how much the addition of a football and soccer team has made on down Town. Every team we have here in town has a big support, and um, it's just great to see a new team come to this city and get the exact same support. The St. Louis Cardinals are also back in action, but saw some lower than normal attendance numbers for Tuesday's night game. St. Louis sports fans say there's still time. We have the best fan base in America, in my opinion, and uh, I think we're going to keep it going. The good news is we got three out of four wins. Unfortunately, the Cardinals lost to the Diamondbacks, but there's still a lot more to all of these seasons, and it was a pretty great day for St. Louis sports. Reporting live downtown, Laura Barczewski, five on your side. Business is booming for a little hole-in-the-wall shop in Hazelwood. Well, things were sluggish just a few days ago for JoJo's Old Fashioned Diner. Another business stepped up and served the owner some kindness. Bob Manneke, owner of Man Meats in Florissant, was stopping at local shops around town collecting donations for a charity auction. That's when he happened upon JoJo's. Door wide open, not a customer to be seen. After talking with the diner's owner, Sean Bonin, Manneke snapped a photo of the menu and took to Facebook. Within half an hour, comments came flooding in, and the people followed. Sean, I'm like, is it really going to work? I said, get ready. And he told by 12, by 12 30 that day, I was getting texts from our customers saying, hey, they're sold out. They turned the close sign on. I was like, are you kidding me? I come out here to places packed like this, parking lot full. I went back in the kitchen. His grill's filled with food. He turned on me and he's like, Bob, what have you done to me? I was like, sorry, not sorry. Several customers said today they were unsure if they were even going to make it in today. The line was long. If you'd like a taste for yourself, JoJo's Diner on Howder Shell is open every day from 7.30 a.m. to 2 p.m. Unless, of course, they're sold out. Send in the clown. A retired high school baseball coach is turning his heartache into joy. What does that do to your heart? Oh, it fills it up. Probably one of the best feelings you can have. How he's still making a difference for children in his second act. Temperatures warming up in the upper 80s. It was our warmest day in almost 200 days. How warm we get tomorrow and when things break with our next chance for rain as we track that here coming up. Making a Difference is sponsored by Midwest Bank Center. He's a former baseball coach who's gone from big innings to the big top. In tonight's Making a Difference report, how he's discovered a new scorecard of happiness. At the Family Arena in St. Charles, the circus is in town. And for one performer, making people happy is no laughing matter. Just trying to make their day better is all you do. 
But long before the ringmaster makes his introductions and the spotlight hits its mark, a different kind of performance unfolds. What's going to be your favorite part? Yeah. Oh, thank you. Steve Kern, oh, so a.k.a. Nice. Knucklehead the Clown, Big picture. seeks out children and parents alike before the show. Sorry. Inviting them to momentarily escape the circus of life's worries. Come on, I know you got it. And even the parents divert their attention from what's all going on. You know, even for a short period of time, that's kind of our job. What's your favorite part of the circus? Before he was donning a green wig and oversized shoes, Kern sported cleats and a baseball cap as the longtime baseball coach at Hazelwood Central High School. I've always been an active athletic type of guy where I love competition. Even then, he guided his players through a game's toughest moments with a compass of humor making his mound visits truly memorable. So the only thing for me to go out there and do is relax him, and I'd go out there and I'd tell him a joke. you tell a joke? I would tell a joke. Even the umpires would start to scoot over to hear what the joke was. But the laughter that once filled the dugout would soon give way to an unexpected silence. A few years ago, the life of this father and grandfather took a heartbreaking turn when his wife Debbie died of COVID. Unexpected. Uh, we just had our 50th wedding anniversary. So how does someone who goes through something like that continue to move forward and, and make people laugh? Oh, you got to have diversions. Hi, buddy! Being a clown, doing the goofy stuff that we all do, really, really helped out a lot. And because laughter can be the best medicine... You squeak! Knucklehead the Clown never misses a chance to perform at places like St. Louis Children's Hospital. These are like the uh, most important circuses uh, we do. I have T-cell leukemia. It's a type of cancer. All the clowns are really cool. 11-year-old Lily Warden is usually a little afraid of clowns. Are you guys ready to keep this party? But today is different. Today, in these moments of levity and escape, her fear takes a back seat to joy. It was nice to be able to actually have fun here. I like how they actually let, you, let, let us have fun and see cool things and let us get out of our room and do all kinds of stuff. Hey! In retirement, Steve Kern traded in a whistle for a red nose. You could take this back down in the studio and put this on, walk into that office, and you'll see the people start smiling. That's all it is. Why are you so pretty? In the end, the only score that matters for Steve now... Anybody need a wife? She's not married. Started ...is the looking. number of smiles he can bring Come to on. those who need it most. Push right there. Push right there. It's uh, probably one of the best feelings you can have. Oh, right here. Steve is now the director of clowns at the Moolah Shrine Circus and encourages all the other clowns to join him whenever they visit a hospital. A reminder, if you know someone making a difference for others, let me know by email at mbush at ksdk.com. Tomorrow is tax day, which means it's a busy time for Johnny Cole. She works at H&R Block and has been doing people's taxes for more than 30 years. But what makes Johnny unique is that this year she will turn 90 years old. Doing taxes keeps her mind sharp, and she told me she still loves numbers. I've always had an inkling for numbers. It's just they're fascinating. And as I told you, numbers have rhythm. It's like numbers are like 863479. That's rhythmic. Before she did people's taxes, Johnny was an accountant. She told me, though, this will probably be her last year at H&R Block. She wants more free time at tax time. All right, we're back with Gary Frank with another look at our weather first forecast and some concerns about later this week, Gary. Yeah, especially Tuesday. That's going to be the day we circle for another severe weather threat. It's that time of the year. We've had it a little bit earlier, so it seems like we talk about it uh, at least once a week now. Uh, quiet outside right now. These plants love this warm weather with a lot of sunshine. Uh, they'll maybe need a drink here after temperatures were close to 90 degrees today. As we look at our currents at the moment, 72. We got to 89. 64 is where we start. 
started off today. That was only four degrees away from our average high, so pretty significant. It remains pretty mild tonight. So that was the second warmest April 14th on record. 92 was the record, but it was our warmest day in 192 days. We had to go back to early October for the last time it was that warm. We will stay mild again tonight. So once again, we'll start off tomorrow morning uh, dry, warm, and once again, close to 90 tomorrow. But we're going to track this system. It didn't look like it's moving too quickly right now, but finally the center of circulation has worked its way into Nevada, and that's going to slowly work its way across into eventually Utah, Colorado, and then central Kansas. There are two areas from north to south that are involved in that enhanced risk for severe weather, and you'll notice we're on the edge of this tomorrow, and I think it's more so tomorrow evening, but it's Tuesday that's as that system continues to push off to the east, there are areas that are under an enhanced risk for severe weather. That's category three from the Storm Prediction Center. We're under two, most of us. You'll see where the bullseye is, really from central Iowa all the way to Columbia at this moment. That's something to note. It could change, but still, at this point, it's we're watching that same area. As it works its way from central Kansas, Nebraska, the panhandles, you'll see all this energy, upper, upper level wind, a lot of lift, ingredients for severe weather, but how will they come together? That's still what we're looking at because by Monday night, you'll notice that there is a little small boundary here that I want to point out. I think it's not out of the question that a couple of storms could pop up very isolated storms a close to sunset. I want you to just pay attention to it because they could be stronger as we're seeing that potential and that's why we have that marginal risk for severe weather. But the main system will be on Tuesday. We'll watch how clouds and rain, how this all comes together Tuesday morning. We may start off with clouds, but as so often the case, if we have sunshine, instability continues, that adds to the fuel of an already impressive storm system off to the west. And that's where we could see all types of severe weather. Right now this looks like Tuesday afternoon and evening and this picture may change, but that's the general trend of this. So as we look at those severe ingredients, they're in place, but the types of severe weather, all types are possible right now. If we have more clouds, we may not have that instability, but if we have those supercell thunderstorms, we could have all types of severe weather. It does look like it's later on Tuesday, but like I showed you, that enhanced risk, the better chances are in central Missouri and to the north. It will be our next weather alert day. We have all types possible. We'll watch how that complex of storms moves off to the east and gives us our, it's going to better determine our chances. So for the next few days, upper 80s isolated storms. Our next weather alert day is on Tuesday, and then we gradually get cooler with chances of rain Thursday into Friday. It's time to go on the move. I'm Paul Cook, your traffic guy from today in St. Louis. Sudden weather changes can affect so many things, and timing of road construction is certainly one of them. Here's an important update for drivers using I-55 in South City. That wet stormy weather late last week caused MoDOT to postpone their closure of the I-55 southbound ramp to Bates construction until Monday morning. Early work week construction can sometimes cause more delays, surprising drivers after the weekend. Drainage has been quite a hurdle for residents and crews in this area, with crews working to improve water drainage, but also coordinating with utility workers installing new water pipes nearby. While Bates is closed, drivers can continue south to Loftboro, turn left, and follow the detour sign back to Bates. And here's a bit of good news. MoDOT tells me the ramps from Carondelet to southbound I-55 and the ramp from 4500 Broadway to southbound I-55 will reopen before this ramp closes. So that's your South City I-55 construction update. Drivers will not be able to use the Bates off-ramp on 55 South this week. Be sure to watch today in St. Louis each morning. I'll let you know if there's any changes. Stay safe out there. Paul Cook. Five on your side. The U.S. on alert as President Biden meets with world leaders following Iran's attack on Israel. Tonight, Missouri lawmakers are responding to the fallout. Uncertainty in the Middle East tonight following Iran's attack on Israel. Tonight, President Joe Biden is urging Israel to use restraint as Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and his cabinet discuss possible retaliation to the nearly 300 drones and missiles that targeted their country. Many of them were shot down. An air base in northern Israel was one of the only places where damage was reported. No one was killed. 
We intercepted 99% of the threats sent to the state of Israel. This is a very significant strategic achievement. Out of 170 unmanned aerial vehicles, zero penetrated into the country. Iran says the matter is over, calling last night's attacks revenge for an alleged Israeli airstrike on an Iranian embassy in Syria. President Biden says the U.S. will stay vigilant to any future threats. However, he told Prime Minister Netanyahu that the U.S. will not participate in any counteroffensive against Iran. Tonight, Missouri lawmakers are weighing in on the ongoing conflict. In a recent tweet posted last night, Senator Josh Hawley called for the U.S. to stand with Israel. Representative Ann Wagner also called for support of the U.S. ally and accused the Biden administration of emboldening Iran with calls for a ceasefire in the region. Congresswoman Cori Bush also weighing in, urging Biden to continue to push for a ceasefire, saying, quote, we cannot let the warmongers win. Our country and our world are calling for restraint, de-escalation, a lasting ceasefire and diplomacy. In the same statement, Bush condemned other members of Congress, she says, are calling to initiate war with Iran. A bridge from the past to the future. The rich history of a new park in North County. A brand new park is now open in North St. Louis County. A grand opening was held this afternoon for the Chain of Rocks Park. It's located on the Missouri side of the historic Route 66 Chain of Rocks Bridge, which now carries walkers, joggers, and cyclists instead of cars. Great Rivers Greenway revamped the site with new playgrounds, picnic areas, and event spaces, along with restored woodland, wetland, and prairie areas. We really want to thank all of our partners um, and all the community members that helped give input to the park to redesign it exactly what people need. And, you know, hopefully they'll come back all the days of the year to visit this place. Hundreds took part in today's grand opening, which included live music, food trucks, and a guided tour of the 95-year-old bridge. All right, Gary, let's get one last look at that weather. Very warm day tomorrow, but I still want to talk more about the severe weather threat for Tuesday. We are under category two of five from the Storm Prediction Center, the highest threat off to our northwest right now. That could shift tomorrow. Check in with Anthony tomorrow morning. We're going to continue to have the updates, but Tuesday is a day we'll have circled for strong to severe storms in the afternoon. There you have it. Five on your side at 10. Don't forget to start your morning off with Today in St. Louis at 4 a.m. And now here's Frank Cusimano with Sports Plus.